Okay, welcome to vehicle maintenance and repairs.com. Gary Della Cruz again, your mechanic. Um, what do you notice here? This is a Polo 1.6 uh, CLP engine, a timing chain motor. Uh, what do you notice? Do you notice anything um, unusual? Well, if you look at this bottle here, you will see that it's uh, pretty, uh, you know, dirty. So the water, it's got no antifreeze in it. Okay, so today I'm going to show you how we're going to flush this system out. The first thing that I did, I just removed this pipe here. It's very simple, okay. Um, it's, the, it's the intake pipe. We just take that pipe out of the way. It's quite simple because it's got a clip there, okay, like a, a spring clamp. And then, you know, it just sort of clips in over here like that. Okay, so you just use a screwdriver, you undo the two clips, okay, and you just pull it off. That's the simple part. Now, you know, we don't want to jack the car up and go through a lot of motions here. So, we need to get to the bottom radiator hose. So, the bottom radiator hose actually comes out over here. See where my finger is? Okay, so there's the clamp over there. So we're going to be loosening up the clamp. We'll take the pipe and we'll, we'll shove the pipe down to the bottom so that when we do flush, you know, the water through the system, um, we're going to open up the top radiator hose as well. We're going to take the top radiator hose loose. So we're going to be sticking the hose pipe through there. But before we even do that, I'm just going to drain the old water first. I'm going to put the, uh, the bottom radiator pipe back again. And then I'm going to put a little bit of um, uh, uh, um, radiator flush, you know, in the, in, the, in the old bottle. I'm going to run it for 15, 20 minutes. And then I'm going to let it cool down a little bit, drain everything out again. You know, and then um, uh, put all the pipes back and then put in the clean antifreeze. Okay, that's the procedure. I'll just set the camera up and, uh, you know, just roll the camera. So as I said, the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to loosen up the top radiator hose. Over here. Okay, and the bottom, the top and the bottom radiator hoses. I'm just loosen up with the clamps here. Okay, if you don't have a special pliers like this, you can use a, a water pump pliers or your normal um, pliers. Okay, so we'll take these two pipes. As you can see, top and bottom radiator hoses. Okay, so we'll just take that bottom radiator, we'll push it down, and you can actually see all that dirt, you know, that rust in the, in the water. Now, I'm gonna open up the bottle. So I just uh, gonna open up the bottle quickly over there. Okay, just to give it uh, and now you can hear the, the water flowing better, okay, out of the bottom radiator hose there. Okay, remember now, this is before flush. This is before I'm putting flush in, I'm putting the hose pipe down in the radiator and in the bottle. Okay, we'll just keep a steady flow. You can see how the water is basically coming out. Okay, we can block that off and get the bottom radiator hose to, to really, you know, we're getting the water to come out through the engine over there. Okay, you can see how dirty the, how dirty the water is. You know, it's, it's brown. So I basically just flush until I, I keep the water running until the water clears more or less. Okay, and then once we've got the water cleared, then I'm going to take the top radiator hose, put the hose pipe into the top radiator hose to flush out the actual radiator. 
Okay. So as you can see, the water's cleared out a little bit now. Okay, water is nice and clear. So I'll stop there. And then I'll put the hose pipe into the top radiator hose over there. Okay, and we'll let that blow through. And then you will see the water coming out the, the bottom radiator hose. You see how dirty that water is? Okay, so now we're basically giving the radiator itself a flush. Okay, remember this is before I put in the radiator flush. Okay, so I'm going to wait until that water clears out a little bit. And once it clears out, then I'll put in, put all the hoses back and put the, I'll put in the um, flush, uh, radiator flush. And then we'll run it for maybe 15 to 20 minutes, you know, till the fans come on and all that, till it reaches operating temperature. And then we'll let it cool down again and we'll go through the same procedure. Okay, and then we'll put in the, the clean, the clean antifreeze. I'll show you now. Uh, what products I'm going to be using, you know, to for this job. So we're just getting the water. Maybe what I can also do is just to reverse the flow of the water, go in through the bottom radiator hose, and see what comes out the top. Sometimes, you know, when you reverse flush like that, then you also get a, a dirt coming. Okay, but okay, that is I think that is clear enough for me. So now I'm going to be putting these radiator hoses back and then uh, put in the radiator flush so back goes my two radiator hoses okay bottom radiator hose top radiator hose Just get the clamps on. These squeeze clamps are not my favorite, but uh, you know they use it on, on these cars. I just prefer a screw clamp, old school screw screw clamp, but. It is what it is. Who are we to question the wisdom of the manufacturers? We only the, the humble mechanics. Sometimes it's necessary to put a little bit of lubrication, like a rubber grease or something on the outside of these pipes so that the clamps can just sort of slide easily because they make the clamps just barely to fit okay so we have that in so what I have I have the replacement bottle okay I have a little bit of uh, liquid molly radiator cleaner which we're going to throw in there and then we've got the HEPU uh, Volkswagen approved antifreeze I've got 1.5 and 1.5 is 3 liters so that's all materials or parts that I'm going to be using so now I'll be putting in the, the radiator cleaner and then we'll run it for a couple of minutes right so in goes the the liquid molly radiator stuff uh, make sure to give it a good shake we'll throw that in the whole bottle it's uh, 300 more okay and then of course we'll fill it up with water Okay, and it is necessary to take out the thermostat switch here, okay. Um, we just need to pull that switch out there, there's a clip, it works like all Volkswagen's. We just pull the clip out, okay, that basically holds it, pull the switch out, and that is to ensure 
that we get that water coming through nicely okay uh, there is a rubber o-ring here guys just be sure that the rubber o-ring doesn't fall away that seals off your unit so we'll be putting in water until the water flows nicely you can see the water is actually running out of there okay can you see that so with that water running out quite nicely there we can now put that pack so with the clip back we'll just pop the radiator uh, or the bottle here again okay make sure it's full we'll put the bottle cap back and we will start the pack so now we'll get it to run and um, at least until the fans come well she's been running for a while now but the fans are not come on yet uh, just another tip you know when you have it running like this while it's flushing put on the heater okay put it on full blast because you want the water to circulate through the heater system as well so i've just switched the car off we're going to give it a, a chance to cool down a bit okay i'll give it about 10 minutes remember that you know when you flush the cooling system you don't want to put cold water through a hot engine okay so we let it cool down for 10 to 15 minutes um, you know before we open up the pipes again and uh, allow the water to flow and flush okay the reason for not wanting to put ice cold water through a hot engine is because uh, you're going to have a, a rapid contraction of the metal and that could cause uh, either gaskets to go or um, cracks, you know, in the metal, especially in the cylinder head. So, you know, just be careful of that. So we have the car uh, cooled down sufficiently. Okay, it just basically pulls out. That's your bottle. So we'll be throwing that one away. And uh, let's open up the main pipes. Okay, we have the top and the bottom radiator hose. We have this pipe over here. We we'll stick the hose pipe in there, and that will get the water flowing um, out of the engine. Okay, you can see we'll just keep it going until the water clears. I will do the same with the radiator. We'll go through the top. The water seems to be nice and clear as well. Okay, so we're fitting, we're fitting our new bottle. We'll put the bottle into place here. Turn our attention back to the pipes. Okay, we'll get the pipes put back on. Uh, so, circulating, we'll be circulating through the system. Okay, as you can see, I've put it, I've made it more than, you know, more than half, uh, maximum at least, um, because, you know, the water will circulate through the system. But, you just have to make sure especially on the center side we just have to make 100 percent sure that our water is flowing you can do this flowing quite well and also ensure that you uh, put on your heater you need the thermostat uh, to open up as well to allow the water to circulate through the whole system okay but I'll, I'll run it and then uh, you know um, before we call for call the job uh, you know complete um, I'll come back 
Okay, so everything's all as well. Um, I'm just driving some more so to get purged and uh, make the right adjustment uh, for the water level there. But there's no leaks, she's not overheating, she's running nicely. Okay, and that's basically how I flush these polos. Okay, and um, get some antifreeze into them. It is very important. Why do we need antifreeze? So that we preserve our uh, internal parts of the, of the cooling system. Uh, water pumps, you know, metal water pipes, uh, water flanges, things like that. The radiator core, the radiator doesn't get dirty and blocked up. That is very important. Okay, and antifreeze basically regulates temperature, especially in uh, summer. But the word antifreeze actually means, you know, when uh, you uh, live in a place where there is snowy conditions, that prevents the water from actually freezing because when water freezes, it expands and it can crack the engine block. Okay, so. Um, a Volkswagen Polo, it's about a 2010 model, um, that is how I treat the cooling system. Okay, so the water's been adjusted, okay, it's purged, it's on the proper level, no leaks, and she's running fine, fan is coming on in time, okay. So, from me, Gary Dalla Cruz and VehicleMaintenanceAndRepairs.com, thanks for watching, see you in the next video. Drive carefully, cheers.